this video is going to be dedicated to the floods in Ukraine. Uh, I call it a collapse of Kafrokadam in Ukraine. It's a collapse. Uh, and it is a collapse. It's a serious, serious collapse of the United Nations. This gentleman here, by the name Antonio Guterres, preemptively traveled to Adam together with American politicians. Uh, there were other politicians who also were present. We have all seen the tragic. Uh, and uh, they have worked on international politicians I'm talking about. Supposedly there was no Russian politicians, but it was Vladimir Putin who swore he's going to blow the dam. He got information from whatever side was involved in it with in an individual that you see right there. That's probably maybe even the most likely because this individual specially works at the United Nations uh, and was keen to cooperate on behalf of British royals especially with Russians. Uh, I was struck by his cooperatism uh, with the Russian side. I was actually, this was one of the people who was involved, sure enough, from 1995. I don't recall that he would be involved before 95, maybe, but 1995 for sure. And remain in a circle of this Illuminati people, if you like, elites, royals, uh, prime ministers, those whom you refer to as billionaires, Hollywood stars, clowns, and such. Uh, for a very, very long time, I am certain, not for no reason, I think they had a good reason to keep him around. Vladimir Putin liked him, was a good friend of Vladimir Putin. Uh, based on information I see on the internet, uh, the tide have taken a Russian side. Talking about United Nations, Antonio Guterres, talking about Western mainstream media. Uh, I just don't see <clears throat> what I would expect And basically, in respect to what took place, let me let me tell you something about a little bit of history about this dam collapsed, the so-called collapsed dam in Ukraine. Um, it's very very brief. Okay, uh, United Nations started to investigate this dam uh, sometimes in 2008, 2010. Uh, it went on for about two years, the investigation with the dam, for which it was declared that the dam is in extreme, extremely poor, dangerous, deteriorating, self-deteriorating condition. It is something. Uh, when it comes to Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, who also was present, who also was involved in it, who also investigated uh, that I got impression about like three different Zelenskis, not one. Meaning they have used also fake Zelenskis in a case to misrepresent and do everything possible to convince me that dam is in a, such a shape that it's just about to collapse at any time. And so if it would collapse, uh, it would not be fault of an individual who was determined to blow one up. That was Vladimir Putin. As soon as the Putin got information about the dam, the dam apparently had a, a some kind of a crack, something like this. It was in a very, very poor state, a very, 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 very poor shape. We are talking about this dam here. Russia and Ukraine. I was here in this dam. They had me on this dam. They they made me travel here, see this. They video recorded this stuff. 
presented to me through a computer, and they wanted me to get, engage in it. And I am engaging in it because I'm not going to have anybody saying that I didn't know or that it was not stated to me and so on and so forth. I, I don't listen. Uh, I go beyond these issues. Uh, my case is bigger than this them. My case is bigger than Russia. My case is just as big as this world. Because there is no country, there is no place, there is no street, there is no home that would not know about the stuff as it is mine happening to people. It's a core of the human rights. Uh, I'm not going to say human rights, but the right to existence. It's a bigger case than this dam. And I am not going to go and give myself at mercy to the people like Antonio Guterres or Joe Biden, who inspected this dam, uh, went on like for two years back and forth studying all this stuff with uh, people of Vladimir Putin. Uh, in other words, I'm not about to give anybody an opportunity to blackmail, to say, ah, you sided with the Ukrainian side, or you sided with the Russian side, whatever side. Let me play you this, or as I did, right? It did came, it did happen that I did call UK media, Express UK British, I called them collaborators of Vladimir Putin, and so this is just to finish what I started. This was on June 7. Now it's June 9. Okay. Um, I'm going to post this link right below so that I don't fail. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a li let's 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 listen to what what Mr. Antonio Guterres had to say. Images coming. Secretary of the United Nations is a monumental you know. humanity. We have all seen the tragic images coming out today of the monumental humanitarian. When they returned over and over again with this individual to our house to Novo Mesto, they insisted me that. horror that the dam, a collapse of the dam like this would bring to Ukraine would have as a result Ukraine fail from liberating itself from the Russian occupation. Uh, they sit on my throat in respect to dam in Ukraine for about probably 13, uh, no, 12, 12 years, 10 years, at least 10 years they uh, instigated in it's going to be Ukraine who's going to be blamed for uh, failure of the dam and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. I'm just going to I'm just going to stop short here because I just want you to listen to all this shit. But I, I, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, Kherson was a city which uh, actually entire Ukraine. didn't have no money for defense okay uh, ukraine played idiotic stupid uh ukraine is a country that got in a trouble because they wouldn't listen to what i had to say uh ukraine got in trouble because of this thing here U ukraine got in trouble because of this thing here look you see this here? You know who screwed Ukraine? Ukraine screwed Ukraine. Ukraine got in trouble because of this. It wasn't Angela Merkel who screwed Ukraine for not accepting her to NATO. It was this news here that you see here. This. Just like for Slovenia, whom I have liberated, nobody else liberated Slovenia than I did. This chicken shit that you see right there, Talking about Janus Jansha, Boucher. I'm talking about Loise Peterle. I'm talking about these people here that you see that they call them. Uh, oh, this year I wouldn't even go into it. 
This were against Slovenian independence in Moscow 1989 when it all started. Okay. These guys were a chicken shit. These guys were afraid as hell. They didn't dare. They didn't dare until I actually solicited, drugged up as I was, got in a total war with the Russians in Russia and Moscow for West, demanding in front of the Russians a military involvement, which was in fact delivered to Slovenia in a military form, in a package, in a military package, which information Slovenian government, once it had obtained these weapons, never ever have relieved, released publicly uh, that it was the package, a military package, received from the West. They had one. So did they have to use one if the worst would come to worse? Because in Slovenia there was only 10 day war. Uh, they would use this package and they would admit, they would have to admit that they received assistance, military assistance from United States of America from West. Okay, but since they didn't have to release the information about it, they kept silent. And as soon as they became independent as a country, as a state, they turned against me and knifed me with forced unemployment and with psychiatry. This so called independence, pro independent Slovenian people, yeah, uh, there is faces that are missing here. Um, there is this mighty Slovenian people that are missing that you don't see here, uh, such as, let's say, Joze Pucnik, and then there was another one, Franz, uh, I don't know what his name is, Bucar. Uh, as soon as they got independence, for which I even stated, when they used Croats and Bosnian politicians, on how we are all the same. They had Bosnian, Alia Izetbegovic, let's say, Croatian politicians insisting me that we are all the same and this and that, uh, to the degree that I started to convince them that we are actually genetically closer to Austrian, to Italian people as the Slovenes than what we are to the Croats, to the Bosnian people. They used exactly what I stated to get on their side, Polacks and Ukrainians, not only Bosnians, uh, Croats shortly after disappeared from negotiations in Moscow uh, because it started to get dangerous. The war started in Croatia during the independence in Slovenia. And not much after that, Bosnian people also realized what exactly I meant and also that I was right about it. Uh, but this was the situation in 1989, in 1990, and even in 1991. And because in, by 1993, so Ukrainian side also turned against me and started to side with the Russians because of what Angela Merkel personally have seen have taken place in Moscow, because of what American delegation have seen was done to me in Slovenia, how they treated me. They infested me with a cancer in uh, Moscow, for which Dr. Igor Kotar neighbor claimed, in fact, they infested me with one in Zagreb. Zagreb, capital of Croatia, claimed that it will be Russians that will kill me. Yeah, but I still think it was... Moscow. I'm pretty damn sure it was Moscow because it was Moscow the one that insisted in the hospitals in a Moscow and I was actually I remember I recall clearly taken to the hospital, the Moscow hospital. I was also taken to the hospitals throughout the Zagreb but it really was Moscow that did it. Uh, because of what I stated here, there was no way to know how far this kind of allegiance, how far this kind of alliance, newly founded alliance, can go in betrayal. Because it became apparent that this betrayal had no limits whatsoever. Uh, Balkan war ended with Serbs 
genociding several nations at once. Uh, and it moved to the Chechnya and other parts of the Russia uh, before it struck Ukraine in 2014 with Crimea and Donetsk. I was used by Ukrainian and by the Russian side as a gift of United States of America and Slovenia through the greater than Great Britain, London, for espionage, eavesdropping purposes. Uh, I was a center of everything that was happening. There was about it was bound to happen in respect to wars, global changes, and so on, inside of this house that always was drugged up. Uh, I was the one who insisted in 1995 to Swedish to move Saab factory, uh, Saab Gripen, uh, to start to work with the Ukrainian side. Uh, they were very, very motivated, Swedish, Gripen in working with Ukrainians. Uh, I, I continue to support Ukraine relentlessly despite a total betrayal of Ukraine against me. Uh, but sometimes in 1997, maybe something like this, the Swedish side have stated me uh, because of what I stated that uh, Based on the observation, based on what they have seen, based on what they have gone through, learned from, uh, it was also the Dutch side that had important say. Uh, they were not willing to commit themselves to any kind of obligation in respect to Ukraine, unlike on a long term that they would build fighter jets and stuff like this, that they would do military cooperation and so on. And instead, it was the Russian side uh, sometimes in 1996, 96, 96, that firmly took lead uh, with people like, I, I'm not going to go into this because it's not worth it to talk about, like Dutch king, like a present Dutch king that would travel to Russia and so on. Um, they became more enthusiastic about Russian prospects than Ukrainian prospect. The Ukrainian prospect uh, was extremely, extremely not promising. And so when you are so smart, when you can do all this and you take pledge to murder your own people, people who did go at the end of extension at over the edge you know how many people was killed in moscow how many of these politicians would not even dare to do something i did for slovenia uh and uh they continue their roads for the better for the worse working together with the russians so for me to say uh hoping that they will join nato and European Union, and in between, they also got fucked by those that whom they have gone and support, like, let's say, Polish side took advantage and enrolled itself inside of the European, leaving Ukraine a little bit longer outside. Uh, and it was like this, that stuff just rolled and rolled, and years went by, uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians would be beating me whenever I was be in Poland, uh, and they would Polak use uh, Ukrainians to unload, to unleash on me physical violence. But it was not very different from my visitations to Ukraine. Uh, I was pretty much guilty for everything. So the years went by. 2008, it was Angela Merkel who said no to Ukraine uh, in respect to NATO, uh, he, he was, she was absolutely correct. Who the fuck needs Putin inside of the Ukraine? If you would, inside of the NATO, if you would allow Ukraine to go inside of the uh, NATO, 
uh, you would practically have a Putin inside of the NATO. I mean, Putin already infiltrated everywhere. But uh, Putin was practically the Tsar of Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian politicians, uh, they were all subject to, I mean, what the fuck is he to say? I mean, it was Ukrainian people, Ukrainian side, who in fact even insisted me for me to give up uh, in Moscow Ukrainian weapons to support option of giving up nu Ukrainian nuclear weapons to back to Russia and so on. I wouldn't even get into it. This is not independence. This is something else. And that's why I stated, whatever the fuck you do, it's your problem. As long as it's not other people from other countries like myself that get fucked because of you, because of your incompetence, because of your treachery, uh, you know, that type of attitude is actually not appreciated anywhere in the world. It's kind of universal. Even if you would go to China or whatever country, Africa, uh, whatever country you would go to, uh, Mid East or South America, nobody wants this kind of stuff. Nobody appreciates this kind of attitude. Yeah? So the Ukraine just have to pay its way to NATO. Ukraine just had to pay its way to European Union. Just had to prove to be worthy member of the European Union. I completely agree on that part. But there is something else to it. This European Union and NATO treachery uh, went a little bit too far. You see these guys laughing here? These are the people who fucked Ukraine, people of Ukraine more than anybody. Ukraine is paying the debt for this stuff. You have no idea what kind of impact this attitude had on American politicians. You have no idea the anger that boiled in, in the people uh, when they witnessed actually this here that was worse than what you see here, this. And it just couldn't be worse. It just couldn't be worse. Uh, but, you know, it was. Let's call it as it is. It was. Um, I wouldn't go specifically into names. You have already seen all the history of Ukraine, how our president escaped to Russia. Um, Ukraine just have to go through these phases to realize, basically, to find itself, I think, in between. But yes, I agree that London did go too far. Uh, and now we are here. What is here to say? There's nothing here to say. You see? Economic and ecological. We have all seen the tragic images coming out today of the monumental humanitarian, economic, and ecological in the Kherson region of Ukraine. The United Nations has no access to independent information on the circumstances that led to the destruction of the Kakova, in the Kakova hydroelectric power plant dam. But one thing is clear in the Kherson region of Ukraine. The United Nations has no access to independent information on the... Uh, it, it's exactly at the speech that Antonio Guterres already had brainwashed me, for which he alone have stated me. We are the politicians also that it's within the first few sentences, usually the main lies are stressed. So this is definitely also a lie. The tragic images coming out today of the monumental humanitarian economic and ecological catastrophe in the Kherson region of Ukraine. Obviously. The United Nations has no access okay, to this here is a information lie. on the circumstances uh -huh. that led to the destruction in of depth the Kakova, information. In the Kakova hydroelectric power plant. Okay, in-depth information. United Nations have in-depth information. And the rest, what he's going to tell you. But one thing is clear. Uh -huh. This is another devastation. 
of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And we are seeing the effects in the city of Kherson, the town of Novakakova, and 80 other towns and villages along the Dnipro River. Mass yeah, it, it is. It is. It was not Ukraine that assaulted Russia. It really is the Russia that assaulted Ukraine. It further became evident that it was the Russia that, in fact, have occupied the area. Uh, past Kherson, and it was pushed out. So the possibility to plant the explosives inside of the dam, uh, the possibility of, of Vladimir Putin uh, taking a charge, whichever, they, they could use drone, explode, whatever. It's a million ways. Uh, undoubtedly, it was not Ukraine that assaulted Russia. De facto, what is seen right there is a work of Russia. De facto also is that Ukraine was heavily starved, knowing that the war is about to storm on Russia, uh, on Ukraine by Russia, that Russia is about to unleash everything that was earned through the oil, gas, mineral trade. Uh, and imagine the country is far wealthier with what I stated than any other country in the world. Um, let's continue with this. Massive flooding, large-scale evacuations, environmental devastation, destruction of newly... When, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tragedy when you need to invest money. Nuclear facility. At least six when, you, when you need to invest money into... Lost their homes. With safe into stuff drinking water supplies at three such as many thousands more. what I'm talking about is them and you just the don't have the money because you know the war is right next door and it's going to strike at any time including the drinking water basically. and the water purification tablets and other critical assistance we'll continue our humanitarian work and our appeals for urgent safe and secure humanitarian access uh, so this kind of news that you see here could potentially even be used by both sides uh, if Ukraine is not going to liberate itself uh, it will become evident to me that Zelensky was trying to make a sale literally also through this dam that this was one of his dots that he would use uh, for a foreign press, like, let's say, the British, like, let's say, this British media here, they say, they say here, poor maintenance and stuff like that. They have taken the photos, everything they documented, and they delivered to the Russia and so on and so forth. Uh, this kind of stuff could potentially be used uh, to rationalize a self-sabotage by the Russians and a necessity of Vladimir Putin intervening in, as what he referred to as his genocide, as intervention, special operation, not the war, right? <laughs> uh, that's why, uh, because my case is bigger than what you see right there, more important than what you see right there and this stuff is extremely important i have to stress the issues uh that are known to me issues that are further or beyond this damn catastrophe here are not going to be used in the future against me by somebody blackmailing you by saying hey you know by the way some kgb uh we also have information that you had information about them being damaged and this and that and so on and you said you know about stuff here uh in respect to you know it's it doesn't have to be a kgb more likely than kgb is what i stated here there is people in the west and they call putin a master of disinformation look putin worked alongside british since 1990 wasn't put in russia kgb yeltsin everybody did gorbachev everybody did 
it doesn't have to be too, for me more little more dangerous is joe biden as american president british royals than what vladimir putin is vladimir putin will be gone russia could happen we'll lose the war we just don't know to what in what a degree even when i say could happen possibly can happen i don't know if it's going to happen but even if i say could possibly we don't know to what degree that's going to happen if it's going to happen you understand you know either way i don't want to have any side coming to me and blackmail you and said hey you know you complain uh, you lied about this you had a clearly a you know political agenda or whatever i don't want any of that stuff guys yeah so i agree everything with 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 whatever uh mr guterres stated except with that sentence right there uh at the beginning when it all started with that one i can't agree with it today's tragedy is yet another example of the horrific price of war on people the floodgates of suffering have been overflowing for more than a year and that must stop you know i think this guy could be a great poet you know a poet civilian infrastructure must stop la 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 I appeal for a just peace. Yes, UN justice and peace and equality for all. And you and charter and international law, the resolution and assembly, and la 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 la. Okay, thank you, Mr. Guterres. I'm going to play you this stuff here. Ukraine continue to blame each other for the destruction of the May. It's very loud. With whole town submerged. This Ukrainian military drone video purports to show a family trapped in a Russian-controlled village. A Russian-controlled village, right? So that's why I said I don't appreciate... Um, I don't appreciate Russian-controlled uh, or Russian or ukraine or ukrainian and so on and so forth i don't appreciate any of that stuff it was that kind of stuff they negotiated during mko trade was that kind of stuff a lot of that kind of stuff that was uh and you know it became clear evident that a special operation as it was referred to as vladimir putin is not even war it's a genocide it's a ethnic ethnic cleansing it's an active active ethnic cleansing it's a genocide don't call this a war or ha, a special operation so you would not refer to as a genocide if you say war you're closer to the genocide right uh but you say just a special operation you're a little further like you're saying that's impossible it could be ethnic cleansing you know what i'm saying pleading for help but all the small drone can do is drop a bottle of water we went on a rescue mission in Kherson, where the water levels are still rising so these guys tell us that they've been at work here since last night they said the work during the night was extremely difficult and that they're really tired but of course they have to keep going they found this house abandoned but rescued three kittens Roman Skandrakov tells me the volunteers face Russian shelling on nearly every sortie. Of course, it's extremely dangerous, he says, especially today, it's very loud. Russia and Ukraine continue to blame each other for the destruction of the Novokhovka Dam and hydroelectric power plant. Excuse me, let me ask you a question. What the fuck is this? What, what the fuck are you saying? Are you working for the CNN? That's a big news house. It's a big company. What the fuck are you saying here? Russia and Ukraine continue to blame one another. Fuck you. Who was the one who occupied this Ukrainian city? Was it Ukraine? What the fuck are you talking about here? They continue to blame. And it's like Antonio Guterres is saying, uh, peace and prosperity for all must stop. Move the fuck out of Ukraine. 
What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? You're talking about must stop aggression, must stop aggression. But it was not Ukraine who started the aggression. aggression. It was not Ukraine who did the stuff like this. If you want to do a journalism, do a journalism. If you don't want to do a journalism, go sell eggs on a market. Go do, go swipe streets. Go work in a factory. Go work in the school. Do something else, please. But don't mislead people with issues like blame one another and uh, aggression must be stopped. Uh, it was not Ukraine who did this stuff. It was not Ukraine in 2014 that assaulted Crimea, Donetsk, that started to murder, kill people, ethnically cleanse people, imprison Tatar population. It wasn't against Ukrainian people only. Ah, it stopped working. I like this. I, I, I enjoy using this stuff here from Antonio Guterres, let's say. I, it really, really appeals to me, this stuff here. It's, it's like... When he's we talking about... See. He's talking the same <laughs> shit over and over and over and over and over again. Must stop. Aggression must stop. Aggression must stop. A peace plan. Peace must stop. Well, sir, uh, why don't you say... Russian side committed atrocities. It's not a special operation. It's about committing atrocities. It's about committing ethnic cleansing. It's about enlarging Russia even more at expense of Ukrainian people. Why don't you state as it is a necessary military interve intervention done for the sake of people of Ukraine so the natural disasters like this could be stopped and point at Vladimir Putin and condemn him and throw the Russia out and condemn one on every step of the way. Why don't you do it? Why don't you do your job? Blame one another. Blame one another. Since when are these two countries, when it comes to blame, in an equal position? Let me ask you. Today's tragedy is yet another example of the horrific price of war on people. Yeah, it is horrific. The floodgates of suffering have been overflowing for more than a year, and that must stop. Oh, yes. Attacks against civilians and critical civilian infrastructure. You know, Mr. Guterres, you already know that Mr. Zelensky and Vladimir Putin both have weak points as Donald Trump stated. You know that Donald Trump would stop the war in 24 hours. Must stop. And we must act to ensure accountability and respect for international humanitarian law. Above all, I appeal for a just peace in line with UN Charter, international law, and the resolutions of the General Assembly. What the fuck is the just peace? Can you be more uh, detailed about it? What exactly is just peace? Just peace is Crimea to the Russia and quarter of Ukraine that was stolen also to the Russia. And that is a just peace with the white helmets, basically what you are saying, on the Russian and on the Ukrainian side, securing well-being of the Russians on the Ukrainian side and securing... Ukrainian well-being on the occupied Ukrainian side, yes? Sorry, I can't see myself in any of this stuff. I know it's a rant, uh, but it makes sense. The Ukrainians say on their side alone, hundreds of thousands are without normal access to water, and nearly 2,000 homes are underwater. While the rescue efforts are hampered by the near constant artillery and mortar barrages. 
Look, we're working despite the possibility of us being shelled. We're taking risks every day, Ukraine's interior minister tells me. We understand that this is war, and it is very difficult to completely avoid a drone or incoming missile. And that dangerous work is far from over. The authorities here say they expect they'll be busy all night getting more people to safety. You know, Mr. Guterres, the final word I'm going to say to you, if the money that is uh, thrown away on United Nations, in many cases, because it was countries that became uh, motivated in a future work in Ukraine, because peacekeeping became a business, job, uh, secure careers, for many people, uh, they started to espionage for either side, basically, so they could have a job in the future. Uh, that dam that flooded so many people, perhaps, just perhaps, I'm saying, probably with the money thrown away on United Nations could have been repaired. And by the way, you're not serving interests of United Nations. It became evident from the case of my own. You don't even know what United Nations Charter is about. You don't even know what United Nations was established, what its purpose was to serve to. I'm a living proof of it. Thanks for watching this video. And today is June 9, 2023.